Hey guys, so we're back about a week later. We got our oil analysis results. If you didn't see that video, we pulled an oil sample from this 2007 Honda Pilot. It does have the AMSOIL Signature Series motor oil in it, the AMSOIL full flow filter, and the AMSOIL bypass filter. And that's where we pulled our sample from. And we wanted to see after 13 months if we need to change the oil or you know what we need to do. Now, sample to summarize only had 5,800 miles on it, but it was over 13 months short trip driving, uh, city driving, stop and go, all that good stuff. So very hard on the oil. We'll go over these results in detail in a minute, but I just wanted to show you the overall uh, results is that the oil is uh, suitable for continued use, resample in 3,500 miles or 65 hours. And so if you look through these numbers, they're really good. Um, they did flag the sodium level was a little high and the boron level they thought was a hair low for this oil. But as you can see in the comments, there's no no need for uh, alarm and they just say to monitor the situation but um basically yeah we're good to good to keep running it and so we last week if you remember the oil was low but before i added i wanted to take this sample so i could give you an actual real um, result rather than adding clean oil that would then make the numbers look better than they are. So when we go ahead and add oil, we're gonna be able to, um, it's gonna actually be in better shape than this, having some more top off oil in it. At things, now here's all the information I gave them. 07 Pilot, 3.5, uh, six quarts, cause I got the added capacity from the filter and everything. Now, the abnormal, you can see that uh, they flagged it as a number two. And if we drop down, it's the sodium and the boron. And they're gonna explain that here in the comments. But so um, full flow and bypass. I don't know why they put micron as zero because it should be two for the uh, bypass. And uh, it's actually 20 microns for the full flow. So AMSOIL, ASM, Signature Series, 0W20. And so, so let's look at the um, comments. There's no immediate need for action. Observe the trend. Sodium is moderate. And that could be a coolant leak. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to observe that. Now I haven't had to add any coolant or noticed anything leaking, so it could also be, it's not an additive because I don't use lube additives. Amsoil recommends you don't. And um, environmental, so not sure about sodium. Boron is slightly low. Now they're saying um, it could just be going down because of the, uh, the time that the oil's been in use. So that's an additive, I guess. And uh, But right there, this is oil is suitable for continued use resample 3500 miles or 65 hours so that's the bottom line right there suitable for continued use um these wear metals are you know pretty low very low i would say obviously that bypass filter is doing a good job silicon nothing to worry about there that's uh sand um, but it can also, silicon can also be an additive um, in certain uh, things, possibly anti-foaming. But so, so let's go down here and we've got all our mileage, mileage on the vehicle, did not change it. Two quarts added, I said a quart and a half, but they, I guess they round up. No filter change, um, you know, very, very low fuel soot, water, I mean, like basically nothing. Viscosity at 100. Now that's your operating temperature viscosity, 9.0. And that's right in the range for 20 weight oil. 
So, and this one right here, TBN, the one that says base number, is your total base number, 4.69. Guys, that's, that's really good for a oil that's been in service for 13 months. Oxidation, nitration, nothing crazy there. And I don't think they did any of this stuff. But yeah, it's... Um, so oil's in good shape. I'm real happy with this. Let's take a look at the product uh, data sheet and we can look at some of these things like the viscosity and the base number. All right, so we're here on the website and now uh, you can see this is uh, March, near the end of March 2020. You can see retail on this is 1330, but if you look right down here at the preferred, that's the preferred customer price, 10 bucks a quart. So you're saving 3.30 a quart. Uh, makes that preferred customer membership make a lot of sense. Which, if you want to know more about that, uh, click right here where it says "Join Now Preferred Customer." So, um, but yeah, this oil, this oil is designed for extended drains, and. Let's take a look here. Well, there's a whole overview, but here's there's a safety data sheet. There's a Las Vegas uh, where they ran it in taxi cabs. And the data bulletin, that's something I wanted to look at because I want to show you the total base number. So here's the whole signature series line, and that goes all the way up to a 5W50 there, the white one. Uh, they came out with that for the uh, one of the high-performance Mustangs. You got the 0W40 for the uh, a lot of the Hellcat Chryslers and and things like that. And uh, so the sequence uh, is that 4A engine test. And uh, this is some good stuff, guys. I'll put the link for this where you can come back and look. Uh, protects from LSPI, um, keeps the turbocharger clean, um, but I wanted to go to the, oh yeah, NOAC volatility. So this is how easily the oil burns off with extreme heat, whoops, running low here, and um, so anyway, 15% is the industry standard, and here's the AMS oil. Now this is the 520 that they tested, um, but for comparison purposes, it's almost a third. It's 5.8, uh, where the industry industry standard is 15. And yeah, obviously, uh, cold starts. It's fluid down to minus 58, and keeps your pistons clean. Um, oh, this is where. So you've got the industry standard. And look how Amsoil does in the test. You want to be well below this. And so here's uh, Amsoil. Now they took the same oil and ran it for a second test. And it, it did jump up quite a bit. But this is the oil punished uh, double the length of this industry standard test. And it's still uh, well within allowable limits. So here we go, typical technical properties. So, 0W20, if you look at the viscosity at 100 Celsius, 8.8. .8, and we are at 9.0, here's the oil report again, viscosity at 100 Celsius is 9.0. So we are, you know, hardly changed at all. Um, a lot of you guys want to know why I run 0W20. Look at the... 0W20 and 5W20, both of them are 8.8 .8 semistokes at 100 Celsius. So there's there's basically no difference at operating temperature. Um, I don't know. I just like the idea of the uh, the 0W20. I use a lot of 0W30 uh, in things that call for 530, and so. Your total base number. Now this is this is your reserve alkalinity. Twelve and a half is what it starts at, and that's one of the things that allows Amsoil to go 
for, as you see, normal service up to 25,000. Even in severe service, it's up to 15,000, uh, 700 hours or one year. And if you want to go past those recommendations, you do oil analysis like we just did. Um, now, obviously, the bypass filter is a big part of why we can run this oil longer. It keeps the oil clean and it does save the additive package um, as well from having to uh, attack and deal with all these contaminants because they're taken out uh, almost immediately by the filter. So with our total base number still at 4.69, we are fine. Now what this is, think about this as reserve alkalinity. So all the acids that are produced by combustion um, if that number ever got down to zero, um, you would have acids attacking your engine from the inside out. And so uh, you never want that number to get down. You know, generally, if it gets down to two, you're going to want to change your oil. The interesting thing is, you know, 4.69, and they said suitable for continued use, no issues there. When I top off my oil, which, if you remember from the video last week, we pulled the sample and I left my oil a quart low um, so that I could give you guys a real look at what this oil was doing. If I had added that quart of oil, you know, this sample would have looked even better than it does now. TBN would have been higher and it would have uh, basically diluted the old used oil with a new fresh quart. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get real results here. So, so here we go. And there's a lot of information here. And I encourage you to click the links and check it out. But let's go back. I wanted to show you some other things on the main product page. There's some testing here that they do Here's some of these graphs, and um, you've got Amsoil blowing away the industry standard. I mean, this is just, you know, and this Kurt or Bond test that I believe this shears the oil, uh, fights viscosity breakdown, and so you look at uh, Amsoil compared to a few other uh, heavy hitters there, and you got some, some big names in there. And then you go to look at these bearings uh, that came out of an engine uh, where Amsoil was tested head to head in a 100,000 mile test. The Amsoil look, the bearings look brand new. Um, low speed pre ignition, huge issue in modern engines. So, right here, you can see how Signature Series protects against LSPI. Um, viscosity increase. This is that test we looked at before. Even when they doubled the length of the test, uh, the AMSOIL was still uh, well within the limits. So, keeps the engines clean, protects the turbos, you know, GM Dexos, Gen 2 specs, everything's cool there. The cleaning power of Signature Series, um, they pulled that oil screen out of an engine, it's almost perfectly clean. It's got a couple little uh, things there. Okay, so here we go with TBN. Um, just just look at this. This is what I was talking about. The AMSOIL is like 12 and a half TBN. And so here's some of the other heavy hitters. You got Mobile One there just below 10. Schaefer's uh, Royal Purple. Okay, so there's those TBN numbers, total base number, and you can see some of the uh, brands that were tested. And the AMSOIL is designed for these extended drains. Um, so volatility. Um, especially on a GDI engine where you don't have uh, some cars you do, but most GDIs do not have any gas hitting the backside of the valves. And so 
you know, you can put an oil catch can, but, you know, one thing you can also do is get a motor oil with a lower volatility. This is basically the resistance to uh, burning off with heat, and you can see some of the other brands tested, and the Amsoil's down there at 6%, where the uh, industry limit is 15 so, uh, so those are good numbers keeps your pistons clean and you can go on down there's some videos here on the website engine masters challenge so a lot of good stuff here um, so I recommend you know you come here you can look up your vehicle or equipment uh, You come here and you can easily, you can select your vehicle and see exactly what you need. Um, I don't know, let's just say you had a 2012 Chevy, I'm just picking whatever, um, Camaro. And let's say, oh I don't know, let's say you've got this 6.2. V8. So you'd come down here. Signature series. Now there is XL and OE. I haven't talked a whole lot about those, and those are correspondingly less expensive as well. Um, and those are not designed for the extended uh, drains like this is. But they are. This is a middle ground, and this is a uh, OE is for OEM oil change intervals. But right there, it gives you capacities and torque. And uh, here's your AMSOIL filter. There's actually some other choices there. And uh, the EA15K50. Some coolant. Let's see. Transmission fluids. Again, Signature Series is amazing transmission fluid. Stands up to heat uh, very well. So... Differential, the severe gear, amazing stuff. Those squeeze bags, the Amsoil Easy Pack, they are extremely um, convenient. And your other things, fuel additives, engine flush, and other things. So preferred customer, go right here. And 20 bucks a year to be an Amsoil preferred customer. So... If you went here, you could also do a six month for $10, as you see, and add that to your cart. You'll save money. Yep. So it's worth it. If you have more than one vehicle you're shopping for, it begins to, begins to become a no-brainer. And so... Yeah, let's go up here, and you can then go shopping, and so you would also um, add your oil and everything. But I want to show you, when you do go to check out, to, you know, if it's your first time, you're going to go right here, create an account, and... This is where, oh good, it's already populated. So, 146-3115, if you don't mind, you know, throw that number in and I get credit. And uh, that helps me out a lot. Um, if you choose to not put one in, they will randomly assign it to an Amsoil dealer. Every, um, every sale generated goes to some Amsoil dealer, just so you know. They do not keep it. So it doesn't make your prices any higher. Um, that's the way Amsoil is set up. A lot of people wonder why Amsoil is sold by independent dealers. And it has to do with when Amsoil came out in the early 70s. You know, it was the only uh, synthetic oil. It was the first. And so nobody was buying it. And so it took one-on-one -on -one 
here it is. So the reason AMSOIL is sold by independent dealers is that it took the one-on-one -on -one interaction from people uh, explaining synthetic oil because it came out in the early 70s and AMSOIL was the first and um, so AMSOIL dealers helped bring uh, you know brought synthetic motor oil to the public one customer at a time and so today pretty much everybody knows synthetic motor oil is better and so uh, AMSOIL is loyal to their dealers and they um, you know they have turned down things from uh, Walmart and other corporations that would um, you know possibly devalue the brand you know all right and here we've got the info on the AMSOIL oil filters definitely a lot of good info on here but yeah, it does say to, um, there's a little exploded view. It does say to go ahead and change it at a year. Um, you know, 15,000 or one year, whichever comes first in normal or severe service. So we'll go ahead and swap that filter out. We can run that bypass uh, filter for another year. Those are two years and uh, see how we do with that. So Amsoil Tech did confirm that I should go ahead and change my full flow filter since it uh, they're rated for one year up to 15,000 miles. So this is the last one I have of these. This is the updated uh, packaging and it's got the grip coating. This is what you'll get if you order. Um, everything ships from Amsoil directly so you don't have to worry about, oh, Mike's going to send me his old... Uh, you know outdated stuff this is perfectly fine but I'm just saying if you order it's coming straight from Amsoil um, so and while we're talking about it there's my info number one synthetic.com that does link directly to Amsoil.com but if you'd rather go to Amsoil.com or Amsoil.ca in Canada just uh, put my dealer number in 146 3115. I'll have links to everything down below in the first comment as well. Filter wrench, I'm just going to remove. It's hard to do this stuff without getting in the way of the camera. This bypass setup, a lot of you are thinking, wow, this is a lot of trouble, and why don't you just go ahead and change your oil? Um, you know, I put this filter on here as an exercise to showcase the performance and longevity of the AMSOIL product and also the bypass filter itself. Um, so you know, does this make sense for most people to do this bypass filter and, and send their oil to the lab? Probably not. For most of you, what's going to make the most sense is changing your oil once a year with the AMSOIL and just, you know, but this, um, this bypass setup is going to be really good for anyone who, you know, maybe you have a diesel pickup or 
maybe this makes sense for you because you drive um, 50,000 miles a year and you could just change your um, change your full flow filter top off the oil and keep running it and so maybe something like that but heavy trucks you know if you got 10 gallons of oil rather than five six quarts well that can start to make sense if you don't have to change it as often if you can run that oil um, you know multiple years with just sampling and filter changes and and topping off the oil that can begin to make sense but again this on a five six quart capacity does this make sense for most people you know maybe maybe not if you want analytically clean oil with almost no wear metals in it then yes it makes sense but if you just want to you know have the have the easy and and uh you know simple convenience of you change your oil once a year 15,000 miles with AMSOIL you know 25,000 on some of the uh, vehicles that hold the bigger filters um, again this is an exercise to showcase uh, what the product is capable of all right there's our old filter doesn't look too terrible that's why I was considering not changing it you know it's only got 5800 miles on it but yeah 13 months so I got that clean wiped off and uh, we'll go ahead and get our new filter ready all right so we'll get our new filter out they're actually gonna stop packaging these in the plastic wrap because I guess if they sit on the shelf a while they can uh, they're worried about um, moisture and stuff, uh, rust and everything, but you know, this filter looks fine. All right, I say this every time. I like to pre-fill. Got the Amsoil Zero W20, got about half a quart here, so um, if you don't want to, don't do it, but um, the Amsoil oils are filtered. Uh, before they're bottled, so they are clean. I know there's some in in industry applications filtering new oil before it goes in a piece of equipment is is pretty standard. Um, and again, that's because a lot of new lubricants are not uh, clean. I know that's hard to believe, but um, so Amsoil filters their lubricants. I believe it's down to two microns, just like these bypass filters, uh, before they're bottled. So, um, no need to filter before it goes in your equipment. And uh, so, I like to pre fill. This just saves the engine that uh, couple seconds where it's got to fill the filter before it gets oil pressure. Since this filter is basically vertical I mean it's a little bit off to the side but we can basically fill it to the brim and we'll lube our gasket and everything so here is just these specs on hopefully you can see that API SP and everything else and there's the ILSAC GF6 uh, GF6A so so yeah, this is, uh, just, it, it blows these specs out of the water as we saw uh, looking at the, the spec sheet and the performance testing. All right, filters all in, looking good. All right, clean funnel there so we can add the oil. And there's the, um, this is a swivel uh, thing that you install in your oil fill cap. And again, go back. Uh, if you want to, you know, see all this done in detail, the installation of the system, go back and uh, check out my uh, two videos documenting that. But anyway, and there are, by the way, there are other bypass setups Amazon makes. This is the universal. This is a totally, you know, you basically do a custom installation on uh, whatever vehicle you're putting it on. There are ones that are tailor-made for like the diesel pickups from the big three, Ford, GM, and, and uh, Dodge with the Cummins. Uh, you can even put the 
Cummins one on the Nissan with the Cummins diesel I, from what I understand and uh, some of those are set up so they just go on to your uh, spin-on filter mount so those are obviously simpler installation than going through your uh, oil uh, sending uh, unit where we did with this one so anyway uh, I'll try to put links to all that down in the first comment and there's one for uh, heavy-duty you know big trucks as well all right so this is what we've got left from the half a quart from pre-filling the filter so we're gonna go ahead and add that and probably just add this whole because uh, we were a quart low before we uh, took the oil sample anyway so this should get us uh, right up where we need to be so uh, real quick guys um, last week on the on the last video I posted a verse a Bible verse and it was basically where Moses uh, you know God told Moses I am I am who I am and so I did that so that this week I could talk about in in John 8 Jesus is having this increasingly heated conversation with the Pharisees the religious leaders in Israel and so there he, he's going further and further along and they're getting more and more agitated and uh, you know people like to say uh, one of the arguments people like to say about Christianity is that Jesus himself never claimed to be God that we put that uh, upon him and that he never claimed that of himself well I mean, if you read the Bible, uh, you read John 8, 58, and, you know, basically he's telling the Jews, look, before Abraham was even born, he said, I am. He didn't say I was. He didn't say, he said, I am. And that is a clear declaration by Christ uh, to deity, as deity. And... Uh, you know, a lot of you are completely unfamiliar with this, especially uh, like Gen Z and stuff. Hey guys, I appreciate you sticking with me. You know, think I'm a little, little crazy talking about this stuff, but I mean, I feel like it's the most important truth there is. Um, we're getting ready to celebrate. Um, uh, there's Passover, actually. The Jews. Uh, uh, may have already celebrated that and there's a good Friday when Jesus uh, died on the cross he died a criminal's death but he didn't die for his own sin he died for the sin of all who would ever repent and believe and so this is the difference between Christianity and you know true biblical Christianity there's a lot of fakes and counterfeits and prosperity gospel out there but true biblical Christianity is that God is holy and just he's the just and righteous judge of the universe and while things are falling apart now uh, the judgment day is coming and all of us are guilty no matter what good works you've done and so when Jesus died he did that because he loved uh, loved us and he wants us to repent of our sin and trust him. Not our good works, but put our full trust in him alone. And what that does is that allows God to forgive sinners like us. He can be just, Romans 3 tells us, and the justifier of those who have faith in Jesus. You see, a judge who doesn't do justice is not... You know, a judge who doesn't do justice is a corrupt judge. And so if God lets guilty sinners go, lets us go to heaven instead of the hell that we deserve for breaking his law, we've all broken his law, um, he would be unjust. And so God became a man. This is, this, is, this is the essence of Christianity. God became a man so that he could live the perfect life in our place and then die in our place 
and uh, he paid the debt. He paid, see, we broke God's law. He paid the fine for us, as Ray Comfort says, as he explains. So that way we can be forgiven. What we must do, the Bible says, is repent or turn from our sin and turn our trust to Christ, Him alone. Not our good works, not our religious accomplishments or denominations or anything like that. So, guys, Easter's coming. That's when we celebrate the resurrection. And yes, I believe Christ rose from the dead. And He is alive. And He's coming back to judge. And so, you know, put your trust in Him. Flee the wrath of God, the Bible says. Turn to Christ. He's the uh, he's our city of refuge. He's our uh, strong tower. So, thanks guys. Time to start up. And we want to get out and check for leaks. There's that mileage, 154361. So, we want to get out and check for leaks. Oil lights out. There's the oil plug, which I did go ahead and tighten just a hair. It was, um, there was some, you know, a little bit on it, so uh, I went ahead and tightened it. It'd be interesting if that was part of my oil consumption, but there's the filter. We're looking good. Nothing's leaking. Got some AC dripping there. Front and rear AC. It's already hot here in Florida. So, uh, I think we're getting a little cool down here soon, though. Alright, so the engine ran about five minutes. That should have mixed everything well. Um, and now it's been sitting for about five minutes down off the ramps. And so we're going to do our level check here. Guys, if you like what I'm doing here, um, go ahead and share this video or share the channel. Go right to your uh, Facebook or maybe somebody that you know. You're like, man, look at this crazy guy who's, um, you know, extending his oil drains or he's, you know, talking about oil performance and, and protecting your engine. Um, yeah, that would help me out. Like the video, subscribe, guys, and uh, you know, again, this this is an exercise showing the performance of the AMSOIL and the filtration. And so, looks like we're still just a hair below full, but that got us up uh, pretty much where, where we need to be. I'm not gonna add to that. I'll check it again probably in a few days. Some more may even drain down out of the engine. It's only been off for a few minutes, but, um, so yeah, guys. Um, again, this was an exercise showcasing the performance of 100% synthetic oil made by AMSOIL and their uh, primary and secondary filtration systems. Again, does this make sense for you? Does it, am I saving money by doing all this? Probably not. You know, you got the cost of the filter system and I mean, the cost of sending the oil to a lab. Um, what this is, like I said, it's an exercise to show you what's, what this product is capable of. And for somebody who's got a diesel pickup or a diesel uh, tractor trailer, something like that, where you're, you're talking about changing 10 gallons of oil, a bypass filter system can make sense and oil analysis. A lot of you already are familiar with that in the trucking industry so um, you know it's something to consider check my links down in the first comment below for more info and um, yeah guys this is uh, this is good stuff oh on the subject of diesels man we got some good uh, really good diesel oils um, meet all the specs we got diesel oils that even go back to some of the older specs because a lot of people like 
those specific formulations. So we still do make uh, some CI4 plus uh, rated oils, but all the new specs, CK4 and CJ4, you know, everything. So guys, I, I appreciate you sticking with me through this. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to the channel and uh, have given me that vote of confidence. So um, yeah, guys, check out the product links below. Until next time, thanks a lot. God bless you.